when President Hinckley announced that I would be the concluding speaker. I'm sure he was wondering if I could get to the, if I could make it to the pulpit all right. <laughs> he knows that I've just had my 94th birthday, so I'm in, <laughs> I'm in my 95th year. And so he would be wondering. He knows that my eyesight isn't very good now, but as my eyesight dims somewhat, I think my vision improves. My vision of the long road, my vision of what lies ahead. And so with all of you here this morning, I am sure you would join with me in saying, what a marvelous time to be alive. And what a marvelous time to be a member of this church. And what a wonder, wonderful it is for all of us to be living in the United States of America and where we have the freedoms that we have, and the freedom of assembly and the freedom of religious worth, religious uh, meetings, gathering. When Ruby and I knelt in the Salt Lake Temple at the altar on uh, September the 4th, 1930, holding hands and looking at one another. Little did we ever realize what would lie ahead for us. We were two young people. I had come out of the country in southern Idaho and Ruby had come out of San Pete County. Our fathers were dead, but we had two wonderful mothers, widowed mothers. They didn't know they were widows, they were just our mothers. And they were with us in the temple. And as we knelt and made covenants and promises, I knew that this, that was for real. And now after we have been married 70 years, I'm just saying to all of you that it gets better and it gets better year by year. The preciousness and the tenderness and of the etern eternal values that lie ahead for us. And so to all of you, I would say, and Ruby would join with me if she would be here, that life can be wonderful and so meaningful. But we have to live it in a simple, simple way that we understand it in living the principles of the gospel. And it is the gospel in our lives that makes the difference as we wind our way through lives, through life. And I have moved our family all over the country. Our children have, grew, have grown up being in school when they were the only member of the church in their class. We've done that many times, but that added to their own development and their own understanding and help in the developing of their own testimonies to see the world out in action, but to see the blessings of the gospel in our lives. Last Sunday, Ruby and I attended a sacrament meeting of a ward here in central Salt Lake. The meeting was most interesting because in that ward, they have some, some affluence, and then they have people who are living in halfway houses. At the uh, beginning of the, of the sacrament, or before, just before the testimony meeting, a young lady walked up to the bishop's stand with, a, with holding a little baby in her arms, wanting it to, the baby to be have to receive a blessing. The bishop stepped down and took the little baby, and the baby was blessed. Later on, during the testimony meeting, a little seven-year-old boy with his daughter, or with his sister by the hand, she is five years old, they walked up to the pulpit, and he helped fix a little stool there for her to stand on his five-year-old 
sister, and he helped her as she bore her testimony. She would be about five. And as she would falter just a little, he would lean over and whisper in her ear, this little loving seven-year-old brother. After she finished, he stood on the stool and she stood watching him. And he bore his testimony. But she had that sweet expression on her face as she watched him. He, wa he was her older brother. But you could see that family love and relationship with those two little children. He stood, he came down from the stand, from the stool, took her by the hand, and they walked back down to take their seat. At the end of, near the end of the sacrament or the testimony meeting, when there was a few moments for me at the end, I asked the young lady who had brought her child up to be blessed if she would come up and stand by me, which she did. In the meantime, I had, while the testimony meeting was going on, I just asked the bishop, whispering into his ear, where is her, her, where is her husband? The bishop said, he's in jail. I said, what is her name? And he told me her name. She came up and stood with me by my side, but she was carrying the little baby. And as we were standing at the pulpit and I looked down at this little precious baby, only a few days old, and this mother, the mother of that daughter, little daughter, had brought her to receive a blessing at the hands of the priesthood. And I looked at the mother and I looked at that precious little child. And I thought, what will happen to that child? When I thought of what she might become or what she could be, but I wondered what would happen for, for her. And so I talked to the audience and to this mother, young mother, about the proclamation that was in, issued some two years or so by the First Presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve, a proclamation on the family and of our responsibility with our children. And the children's responsibility to their parents and the parents' responsibility to each other, that marvelous document that brings together the scriptural direction that we have that is, would guide the lives from the time of Adam and Eve on till the final winding up scene. And we talked about it. And as I looked at that little baby wondering what might happen to it. And then I thought of a last summer, Ruby and I were up in Idaho for a little while, and we met some people who, from Mountain Home, Idaho, the Goodrich family, and Sister Goodrich had come by to see us and to say hello, and had brought her daughter, Chelsea, with her. And Sister Goodrich, in the part of the other, was along with the conversation we were having, said, Chelsea has memorized the proclamation on the family. And that Chelsea, who is now 15 years old, and I said, Chelsea, is that, is that right? She said, yes. I said, how long did it take you to do that? And she said, my mother, when we were young, started a, a, a program in our house in helping us to, me to memorize. And so we would memorize the scriptures and scripture passages and, and sacrament meeting songs and other type of things that would be helpful to us. And she said, so we learned how to memorize and it be has became easier for us. And I said, then you can give it all. And she said, yes, I can give it all. And I said, tell me, now you learned that when you were 12 years old, you're now 15. And pretty soon you'll start dating. Tell me about it. What has it done for you? And Chelsea said, 
as I think of the statements in, the, in that proclamation, and I understand more of our responsibility in, as a family and our responsibility for the way we live, and the way we would conduct our lives, she said, this becomes a new guideline for me. As I, as I associate with, uh, with other people and when I start dating, and I can think of those phrases and those sentences in the, dec in the proclamation on the family. And she said, this will give a, a yardstick for me to, which will help guide me, and it will give me the strength that I would need. President Hinckley, a short time ago, was speaking to the students at the Brigham Young University. And he, he talked to them and or made the statement about life is a great uh, chain of generations, link, link following link, with links all linked together, on until the end of time. And in talking to the students about a weak link or not becoming a weak link or to have the link in your family strong. And so we've heard a lot of instruction and help here this morning in the conference, of course, regarding f family history and families and the reason for the, f for the linkage and the responsibility that we have to do the temple work for all of those tens of thousands of people that be, could be part of our own families that are waiting on the other side to, be, to receive the, 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 permit, the, the right to have the ordinances and that must be done on this side of the veil, to have that work done so that they can carry on what needs to be done on the other side, which we all understand so well. And so I would say to all of you here this morning, I would hope that you could develop a strong feeling in your own families and with you personally about not wanting to become a weak link in the chain of your family and of your, of, of your ancestors, and then to encourage that you would have a strong link in, the, in your posterity so that that work could be done and be done properly and that you would have that that proper linkage, but that you would not be the one that would be a weak link. Wouldn't that be a terrible thing to do? To think in that long chain of that, of that work that needs to be done, of the saving of souls, and of the precious work that needs to be done. If you were the one who might have been a, a, the weak link that caused then people who become your descendants not to, f to be able to be part of that, of that tr strong linkage. The, uh, when the saints were, get, were preparing to leave Nauvoo, and with that un unfinished Nauvoo temple, it was possible for them to, to endow a few people. And President Brig or, or, or Brigham Young, he was, of course, president of the Quorum of the Twelve, was a senior, senior high priest, or senior apostle at that time. He, he wrote in his journal about the anxiety that the people felt and had when they were trying to get their wagons equipped to start to trek west going out, going west into that unknown area that they knew nothing of, but they were following their leaders, but they were getting their few possessions that they, that they could take with them on the wagon ready to go. But there was an opportunity for some of them to be able to be endowed, and that they were anxious to be endowed. And Brigham Young in his, he made the, the comment that he stopped doing all of the regular routine work that he was doing as the leader at that time. 
he, he, he put that to one side so that he could go to the, he would stay in the temple and carry on the, the endowment that work that was necessary. And so he used the word uh, uh, that he was anxious to do what the saints were anxious to have done. But that word anxiety became interesting as it appeared in that little account of his, of, his, of the anxiety that they had to see that that important work had, would be accomplished before the people would leave, leave on the, on the, the tr trek to go home. I leave you my love, my witness, the knowledge that I have that this work is true. I know that God lives. I know that he loves us, loves us just as we love our children and our posterity. We now have 65 great grandchildren, and of course we'll have more on their way. And we love them all. And we hope that the chains in our family, the links, will be strong and that our children will be blessed. We're proud of all of them, that they will grow up with a strong knowledge, that, that, that knowledge and the feeling that I have regarding God, that he lives, that he's our father, that all of this work that is, is of course, is under his direction and the, and the way that he taught his son, who is our savior, Jesus the Christ. This is the church of Jesus Christ, restored to the earth in these latter days. I know it is true. I know that we have a living prophet upon the earth today. And when you see the marvelous things that are happening in the world today, here in the church, now with 100 operating temples, and some of you here will live to see the day when there are 200 operating temples and then 300 operating temples and whatever the number might eventually become. But we're living at this time and this day and age when marvelous things are happening. And when we talk about, the, about a living prophet who receives revelations from on high in the directing of this work, I testify to you that those of us who work with him all the time can testify to you that he is God's prophet here upon the earth, leading us in doing what is right and what is proper. May your links be strong. May you personally find the great joy and the happiness that can be ours through living the principles of the gospel. I leave you this love and witness that the church is true in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.